Pegasus Spaces offers a cloud-based enterprise software focused on financial services and real-time big data. So while she gets set up, this is actually my favorite part of the evening. Uh, what I'd like to do is take a couple minutes to ask everyone to either turn to your left or right and introduce yourself to someone that you don't know. Uh, so uh, my name is Shai, Shai Hasidim, I'm the part uh, of Giga Spaces, I'll uh, uh, give you a bit of uh, kind of uh, background of myself in a sec. Um, um, as you have seen uh, before, there's kind of quite a bit of challenges with dealing with big data. What you're going to see over here is uh, quite a bit kind of different from what uh, the uh, other uh, uh, presenter had. Uh, what we're dealing here is with uh, systems that need to process data very quickly in real time where the amount of data that uh, needs to be dealt with is, is gigantic. So uh, a bit about myself, I'm the uh, Gigaspaces uh, US CTO, I'm doing software for many years, I'm doing uh, Java, .NET, C++, and I'm uh, part of Gigaspaces for the last uh, 10 years, and I'm basically uh, oversaw the entire activities of uh, our teams here, and uh, from technical perspective, and we've got here the team, uh, Steve, and, uh, that's running the sales, of, the sales organization, and uh, Norm that uh, actually prepared, uh, helped to prepare this uh, presentation, and this content. We're actually located just one block from here. So uh, whoever uh, that uh, is interested, we're here and we've got our office just to, uh, one block. Um, and we've got actually a, a, a team that spread all over the world, um, Europe and the Far East and obviously here in the US. Um, a bit about ourselves and what we're doing. We, we've got quite a bit of, uh, I know, uh, is there anyone here that uh, is doing, doing financial services, Bank of America, Goldman, Morgan? Yeah, so, so you guys are our customers for uh, many years. Uh, the thing is that uh, beyond financial services, there's a core bit of um, e-commerce, uh, e-gaming, telco, healthcare, that uh, using our product. And the beauty here is that uh, the guys over here mentioned cloud. Um, many of the, what we're doing, many of the customers that uh, using our product, leveraging because spaces, whether or not private cloud or not public cloud. Most of them actually focus on private cloud because you know you're not uh, running trading system and having a uh, customer data on a um, um, uh, public cloud. This is kind of some of our, uh, our kind of a quick uh, uh, short, short list of our uh, kind of uh, biggest accounts. The uh, ones that uh, are interesting are the the ones that, that uh, are building a uh, credit uh, rate system, uh, credit uh, rate system, uh, systems, uh, pricing system. You guys see the list. Um, uh, whenever you got. But uh, plenty of data that uh, need to be processed transactionally, reliably. Um, uh, this is this is what we do. This is our territory. So we have a bit about the product, which is actually also very interesting. We actually evolved in the last uh, 10 years, actually more than 10 years, from a data scaling product to a pass ena enablement, uh, where um, in between we're dealing with um, uh, application scalability and uh, cloud enablement, and that's really what we do. So um, the scope is starting from data scaling up to a pass enablement and allowing you guys to deploy any type of app on any cloud. So what are, what are actually the, the challenges that uh, uh, many of uh, our customers are having uh, whenever they've got real-time big data analytics systems? So the first one is obviously performance, speed. They need to have their data, their trading system, their reconciliation engine, their multi-data systems, their healthcare-based healthcare, healthcare based systems, and logistic systems to run very, very fast. Latency is the king. Um, I think that uh, someone's done a research and they've calculated for the, that for market data system, um, every millisecond uh, delay is uh, around $100 million. Okay, so that's that's uh, quite a bit of a challenge. The, the way that we're dealing with this is very simple. No network activity, no disk access, everything is in memory. We're trying at least to have the entire processing done in memory. And I'm sure that you guys know that memory became pretty cheap, hardware is very cheap, and, and that's actually one of the secret, uh, one of the secret source of, of what we're doing with Gigaspaces. The second one is scalability. 
Okay? You, are, you all have your cloud, you've got your grid, you've got your network, you've got plenty of machines. How you can actually build a system that can scale? It, it's quite a bit of a challenge. The way that we do that is MapReduce. Anyone here ever heard about this term MapReduce or Master Worker? Okay? Basically, generating kind of a supercomputer out of plenty of you know, commodity uh, machines. <coughs> the next one is simplicity. Well, you guys can you, can, you can find plenty of technologies out there that will allow you to build scalable and uh, um, uh, fast systems, but in many, many cases, it's very, very complicated to do that. And, and our focus as, as technology guys is, uh, is to build a software that will allow anyone, even the 100 IQ developer, which is actually the average developer, to build these systems. So, what is the demo? Um, anyone who has any idea what are the most free, kind of I would say, most three most popular words on Twitter? LOL. Uh, free. Free. I, where's the beer? <laughs> forget the da. Yeah, well, that's obviously, um, you know, forget the da and the in and. Yeah, no one got any ideas? Just throw some, like, some... Just oh. beer. <laughs> it will be just... You, you, I actually just run this right now, and you see the demo. It's just found love. <laughs> it's interesting. Very interesting. Wow. Okay? And, and I'll run this. I actually got this thing. I'll, I'll run this in, in a second for you guys. And I just I was running this in the last few minutes, and this is what's all kind of... Um, uh, the three top, or out of the top ten, the, the three that actually was were very interesting. So obviously, everybody knows Twitter. Um, the, the last number which I've seen is about 300 million tweets per day. Um, on average, 8,000 tweets per second. On peak load, there's uh, 25,000 tweets per second. And obviously, building a system that can process this uh, kind of uh, amount of data, and again, this is just an example. You guys can obviously associate this with your or existing, uh, existing system, whether it's a, a financial services one, or um, 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 logistics, or security <coughs> system, or whatever it is, whatever it is, there's plenty of data, um, scalability and elasticity, okay? So if there's, a, I know, a, a good event or a bad event, okay? You might have, I know, a, a next game, uh, or you might have something going on, I mean, I mean some other tornado, or whatever, there's a lot of tweets. And you can't really uh, kind of ex uh, um, uh, uh, predict when this will happen. So beyond just being scalable, the system needs somehow to increase its capacity on the fly. It's a huge challenge. We are dealing with this in giga spaces simply by allowing the system to grow on demand and consume resources from some external um, um, uh, data center. It could be your own data center, it actually can be obviously a, a cloud. And you could have a hybrid application where you've got um, part of it running within your local data center and the kind of uh, the viable component that uh, whenever it needs to scale, it will run all over uh, across our remote data center, in many cases, again, on a, on a cloud. Facebook, for example, we've got 100 billion hits per second. Just to, just to, show, them, to show you the guy the magnitude of these systems. So usually, I guess that everybody familiar with the classical architecture world, I'll have uh, uh, some sort of a database and I'll have some sort of a, a, a compute cloud or compute grid. Uh, the problem is that all these guys suffer from these four, you know, kind of uh, um, hotspots. CPU bottleneck, network bottleneck, contention, you need to do some counting, and database bottleneck. Okay, obviously I don't need to explain all these. So this is the kind of the architecture, and I'll go through this very, very quickly and I'll just go straight to the demo. The idea over here is that these tweets are actually go through a flow. It's, it's uh, kind of a bit similar to a flow that you've seen before, but everything here is actually executed in memory. And at the end of this uh, flow, there's uh, counters that actually count again the most popular words um, on Twitter. Okay, so let's move to the demo. 
So when we got up here, yeah, I'll, I'll, everybody can hear me? Okay, yep. yep. so guys, this is a live demo. I'm not running any video anything, so <coughs> uh, if this would be embarrassing, then my apology. Okay, so um, anyone here done Java, C Sharp? Okay, so I'll, 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 be, I'll be gentle here. So um, before going into the code, I'll just run this just to make sure that you guys will see that it really works. So I've, get, I've got here this feeder that actually consume, it will actually consume, you guys are very quick, you can actually tweet, and, uh, and you'll see that there are some tweets that are fed into the system, and there's, there's, uh, there's some data, you see that there's, it's actually writing data into, into this data grid which is running, and I can query, okay, you guys can see all these, it's actually, you can actually see these statistics going on here, Okay, there's, uh, there's some writes and updates, and this isn't actually processing all this data. I can actually also show you these tweets. Okay, so you see this, all this data is coming into the system and it's processing, and if I'll query the system again, you can actually see the most popular words again. Uh, I'm just running it for for I know a minute or so, and you can see that this is kind of the most popular one. Okay, and it's doing this very very quickly. Okay, and it's on my laptop. I don't need a super you know computer machine that would process all these all these tweets. Okay, and again, this is done right now in real time. I'm actually consuming real tweets <coughs> from the system. And again, you can actually see these. Just clear this, and you can actually see this graph. Uh, the lower, the lower graph actually shows the history of all the activities, and we can see here that we've got uh, this and this amount of uh, writes per second and updates that the system is uh, actually performing. Any questions before I kind of dive into the code? Yeah. How is it making? the processing any more efficient on the laptop? I guess it seemed, I, I thought the benefit was the elasticity and the, and the scale, you know, kind of horizontally, but how does it make it scale vertically on the same process? Obviously it's not, Okay. because I'm not running it, I'm, I'm not scaling it up, but um, uh, what we see over here can scale very easily. You know, the, this is kind of a simple demo on, on my laptop, but uh, if I can run this on, on a cloud and it will scale whether the piece that, for example, consuming the data from Twitter, or it will scale the piece that is processing this data um, uh, in elastic manner. Again, I haven't gone through the, the entire architecture. Obviously, this is you know on a 15 minutes demo, and uh, I won't uh, I won't do that. But um, uh, I just want you guys to understand the kind of the basic principle of hey, I've got these these incoming data that is pushed in the system very, very quickly, and I need to process it also very quickly, and eventually have the outcome of this transaction maybe pushed into a kind of a big, uh, big data store like Cassandra or MongoDB or Hadoop or whatever for kind of a more kind of a, a, a heavyweight analytics, but the real-time analytics actually done in memory without relying on a kind of a, um, kind of a heavy database. And is it architected in a way that it's easy to distribute it? Is Absolutely. That, is that part of the idea? Absolutely. So if I move this to a grid of some type, I don't have to change the business logic. Really. You don't have to change anything. Okay. We will actually we'll do that automatically for you. Okay, you just need to introduce us a cloud, and boom, Gigaspaces will actually scale any piece dynamically. How much time do I have? Five minutes. Okay, questions? Yeah. If I invest in this, what are things in my architecture that I'll stop investing in? You'll pay less money to Larry, so Larry will not be able to buy a new company next year, I guess. And there's a good chance that you need less IT because uh, many of what's going on over here, uh, especially the scaling and the provisioning, um, will be doing that automatically. Um, and there's a very good chance that uh, you'll need uh, less expensive de developers because the code or the, the idea over here is that if you know basic Java, you can use the product.